but he takes the next step with Munafiqun, may Allah, may Allah get this from him. And understand that this surah, one of the things that's special about Surah Al-Baqarah, it deals with matters of the heart in great detail. It deals with matters of Iman. And by contrast, you will find in Surah Al-Imran, in the next surah, there will be a lot of mention of Islam. So there's Iman here, and then Islam. First you fix what's on the inside, which is what? Iman. And then what comes out on the outside is? Islam, right? So you find in the in the light of Islam, wa man yabta ghayr al Islam bi nafa al mufalaqin. You find all this mention of Islam in Allah Rabbah. But in this story, you find over and over again mention of matters of the heart. So let's keep on reading. Fi kulu bi him barat. In their hearts, there is, especially in their hearts, there is a disease. Fazada hum Allah barat. Then Allah increased them in their disease. Wa lahu maadabu al amimun. And for them, especially, there is painful punishment, greatly painful punishment. Unlike the Kufar, he didn't end here. He said, بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْدِمُونَ Because of the lies they continue to make. Because of the lies they continue to make. The first symptom of the hypocrite has been given. Which is what? They are liars. And they lie continuously. بِمَا يَقْدِمُونَ is different. بِمَا كَانُوا يَقْدِمُونَ is different. They continuously used to lie. This is Timurah here. Right? So this is something that's a very serious sign of hypocrisy. No lie is too small. No lie is a white lie. We have to look for them. We have to be conscious of them in our in our daily affairs. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ When it is said to them, don't cause corruption in the earth. Don't cause corruption in society. Don't be the cause of, of, of fasad. لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا What do they say in response? إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ No, we're the peacemakers. We're the ones trying to reconcile. Now you have to understand the background of this ayah. You see Allah's Messenger وسلم, is in this intense struggle against Kufr. There's this, the truth and falsehood are colliding against each other, and now it is known black from white. But these hypocrites, they have friends that are not Muslims. And they have friends that are Muslims in Medina. They have old allegiances and they have new allegiances with the Muslims. And if they become completely aligned with the Messenger of Allah وسلم, then they have to cut off some old relationships. But they want to keep it so that they keep both sides happy. Just in case if the Muslims win, we have good connections with the Muslims. But if in case things don't work out with this messenger, and they're all killed and they die, well, we don't want to die out either. We should have at least some backdoor open with the Quran also. So they go and they kind of mingle with both sides. And they don't take a clear side. They're wishy-washy about it. And so, when, and this is a kind of corruption. This Allah is also a kind, of, kind of corruption. But when you say to them, why are you watching this facade? They say, no, we're just trying to make peace. We're just trying to reconcile between the two sides, not knowing that those who are on the other side are not interested in peace. And that's the other misconception. These people think that they're only trying to cause peace. Understand, the people on the, against the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in Medina and in Mecca, these people are far worse and have far more animosity in their hearts than the Muslims ever had towards them. The Muslims only responded to injustices that were done to them. And even then, even if we have prisoners of war, they were treated better than even the soldiers themselves. This was the attitude of the Muslims. But inside the hearts of the enemies of Islam, there was intense hatred. Intense hatred. And they, would, they, I mean, they were engaged in torture and psychological abuse, and all kinds of filth against the Muslims from the very beginning. But these people, because they don't want to lose allegiances on either side, they think they're peacemakers, which in reality they're not, not even close to. أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ No, أَلَا means you should all know, be with her. You know, uh, get it through your heads. These are the ones, and there's no doubt about it, these are the ones that are the cause of mischief. These are the cause of corruption. Those people, they are the cause of corruption. The hypocrites. وَلَا إِنَّا يَشْرُونَ However, they have no realization. They don't feel it. They don't realize it at all. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ When it is said to them, why don't you have Iman? Develop Iman in your heart just like other people have Iman. In other words, they're told, Look, why don't you have Iman like Abu Bakr? Why don't you have Iman like Allah? Why don't you have Iman like, you know, Musab ibn al Why don't you have Iman like these people? What's wrong with you guys? Why can't you be more like them? Because these people, these, when we say, why don't you believe like the real people have believed, these people have believed, we're referring to people who have proven their Iman who sacrifice money, who sacrifice their livelihoods, who sacrifice their homes and travel with the Messenger وسلم, abandoned everything that they had and left it behind, spent whatever they could in the cause of Islam. These people have proven that they actually have Iman. They have no other motive but to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to show allegiance to the Messenger. When they're told, why can't you be like that? 
They look at those believers, those, those Muhajirun, the people who have migrated from Makkah, they look at them and say, you want us to believe like that? And we know Kama'a Amal Safaha. You want us to believe like these fools, these idiots believe? Who are they calling fools? And this guy was doing good business in Makkah, he left everything and came here. You want me to be like him? You want me to be like that loser, that fool? Look at him. He doesn't even have the sense to save his house. Okay, you can believe, but you don't have to believe that much. You should sacrifice, but don't go crazy in your sacrifices. These people are too extreme. I don't want to be like them. Kama Amal Sufaha. So they call the true believers who have made all these sacrifices in their allegiance to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa they call them fools. And they don't have to respond. That's the beauty of it. The Sahaba who are being insulted in this ayah, they don't have to say, who are you calling fools? The Messenger doesn't have to say, don't call them fools, these are my beloved companions. He doesn't have to do that. You know who defends them? Allah Himself, He says, Ala إِلَّهُمْ sufaha. No, these people, no doubt, they are in fact the ones that are fools. They're the ones who are fools. Who's saying that? Allah is saying that. Allah comes to the defense of His Sahaba, رَبِ اللَّهُ عَنْ وَفْرَانِ and he says, However, they don't know. They don't even know what kind of fools they are. So in one place Allah says before, twice He said they don't even realize it. Now He's saying they have no knowledge either. And so another element of hypocrisy is a lack of knowledge derived from this time. They don't realize it, and they don't have much knowledge either. They don't really know what a fool is. And later on in the surah, Allah will teach us, you want to be intelligent and lead the way of fools, Allah Azza wa talking about the sacrifices of Ibrahim He says in the same surah, وَمَنْ يَقْتَرِي عَنْ You know, مِنْ يَقْتَرِي Ibrahim إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِيهَا نَفْسَ Who will lead the legacy of Ibrahim except the one who fools himself? Now when Allah refers to the legacy of Ibrahim, what do you think of? Sacrifices. So those sacrifices are done by the intelligent, and whoever abandons sacrifices is the fool. So when the Sahaba are making sacrifices, they are on the legacy of Ibrahim and whoever abandons that is the fool. Anyhow, he says, When they come to those who believe, they say, every time they do come, they say, We have iman. And they make sure they say it. Now, believers don't have to say to each other, We have iman. It's known. If somebody comes to you, I really believe he's the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, I really have strong iman in the akhir. When somebody says that, you say, Man, that guy is weird. Why does he want to come and tell me what he believes? Belief is in the heart. We all know we're Muslims. You don't have to come and claim your case to me. You know why when someone feels the need to do that? I'll give you a childish example. Your kid comes to you and says, I didn't, I didn't write anything on the wall, you know. What does that mean? You got a closet skeleton in the closet. You got something to hide. You're covering, you're overcompensating. The hypocrites are paranoid. They're paranoid that people see through them. Right? They see what the filth is on the inside, because they got filth inside. And when they come to the believers, when they come to the community of the Muslims, they feel like everybody can see them for who they really are. So they feel like they need to cover up more. And the way to cover up more is, I really have a lot of iman. Halu amanna. We have iman, we're with you. You know, they go out of their way. The leader of the hypocrites, the leader of the hypocrites, before the messenger would get up to speak, you know what he used to do? He used to stand up before him. People, this is the Messenger of Allah, listen carefully. You should, you should listen to his advice, he has good things to teach you, and you just make a public service announcement and sit down. Why? Because he's hoping if I do that, by the way, even if he didn't make that announcement, are the Sahaba going to listen anyway? They are, okay? He just needs a little bit of mic time, so people know that this guy is legitimate. You know when he walked away from Uhud? He left Uhud, right? The next week after that, the khutbah was being given, he got up again. People, this is the Messenger of Allah, listen to him carefully. Some Sahaba grabbed him and sat him down. <laughs> and he was furious. He was, he was enraged, he didn't get to do his show. So he walked out of the Jum'ah. He walked out of the khutbah. And at the entrance of the khutbah, some Sahaba met him. Where are you going? Turn back, make his I don't need any istifla, he walks out. When he gets called out, they explode. This is what Allah's Messenger describes from Allah as another sign of the hypocrite. When he's argued, debated, criticized, he explodes in anger. He couldn't take it, his temper exploded. He walks away from the Jum'ah. I don't care about it. Now that I'm exposed, might as well go all out. You know? That was that was the idea behind that. So anyway, here Allah says, when they come to the believers, they make tall claims. And when they go back to their devils, now it's not like they're meeting jinns 
in the background. Who are they meeting? They're meeting the enemies of Islam that are plotting against Muhammad's messenger, but they're making friends with them anyway, and sharing Muslim secrets with them. This will become more elaborated in Surah Ali Imran when Allah says, لَا تَتَّخِذُوا بِطَارَةً مِنْ دُونِكُمْ لَا يَأْمُنَكُمْ خَبَالًا وَدُّوا مَا عَلِمْتُمْ Don't take secret keepers, close intimate friends other than Muslims. Don't make those friends like that other than Muslims. Really close friends that you share secrets with. They will not leave any stone unturned in trying to cause you harm. What do ma anittum? They want to, they want what could harm you. Qad badatin taqwaqu min akhwaqihim. The animosity has already come out of their mouths. Wa ma tuhfi suduhum akbar. And what they're hiding in their hearts is even bigger. What they say out of their mouths is nasty. But you don't even know what they haven't said yet. Allah knows that too, and that's even worse. So don't think that they're there to make peace. They're just using you as a pot, and these people are getting used. But when they go to them, they say, Inna ma'akum, inna ma'akum ustazi'un. We're with you guys, for sure. We were just kidding. When we went to the Muslims and said we believe like they believe, we were just kidding. We're, we're really with you, we're chummy with you guys. So they're trying to keep both sides happy. See that? This is by the way, incredible. The Arabic language is so beautiful in this. The word munafir comes from the word lafaqa, which is a lizard's hole. And the lizard, in the desert lizard, it makes a hole that has two entrances. So if the, 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 the hounds or the fox is coming after it from one hole, it can come out the other hole. If it comes out this hole, it can come out the other hole. From that we get, get the word munafir. If the Muslims are in trouble, he can always have the open door with the kufah. And if the kufah are losing, he always he can say, ah, I don't believe it right here, amanna. Right, so he's got both exits open. So this, this is the, the nature of the munafir. Allah says, and so He says, we were just kidding. We're not really with those Muslims. You think crazy like that? No. Allah who yastahs you with Him. It is Allah who is making fun of them. And there's a lot of shawak in this, uh, this part of the ayah. One of them, of course, is Allah will humiliate them on judgment. But even now, this pathetic attitude is Allah's way of humiliating them. They have no respect. They have no, the Muslim community doesn't respect them. The kuffar don't respect them. Even they see them as weasels. They don't respect them either. Nobody, they have no respect, and they are the object of ridicule everywhere they turn. And this is Allah's way of humiliating these people. Allah will just have to be humiliated. يَعْلَهُونَ And He lets, He extends them. Very powerful words. He extends them in their rebellion, and allows them to remain blind. Now there's amiyah in Arabic. Amiyah, which means to be blind in the eyes. Then there's amiha, to be blind in the heart. Allah said, وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي طُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ He extends them in their rebellion, blind of the heart. Now what does that mean? It means they want, they disobey Allah, they violate Allah's commandments, Allah gives them more opportunities to violate even more commandments, and more opportunities to disobey Him even more. In other words, in, in, other than, rather than restricting the opportunities for evil deeds, Allah opens the door to evil deeds wide open for them, go ahead, knock yourself out. Go ahead, dig your hole even deeper, if you will. When my teacher, Dr. Abdul was explaining this ayah to me, he said something really interesting. He gave a really interesting parable, I'll give it to you. He says, you have a wild dog. You're trying to calm this dog down, it doesn't calm down. You try to put it on a leash, it's constantly pulling at the leash. So the owner decides that he's going to punish this dog. So you know what he does? He gives him a 300 foot leash. When the dog tries to pull, now it's, it's free to run, so it runs as fast as it can. And the dog is thinking, this is an act. Look, I'm free. Nothing happened to me, I'm good. But actually, this is a punishment. Why is this a punishment? Because when he reaches top speed, what's going to happen? <laughs> He's going to get yanked. The pull is going to be even harder. The, the more they dig their... Allah says, you want to dig your hole? You know what? Let me have you dig it a little deeper for yourself. And literally dig it as deep as you possibly can because Allah will tell us later on in Quran, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ Hypocrites are in the lowest pit of the hellfire. How do you think they got that low? They dug it themselves. These are the people who purchased misguidance in exchange for guidance. They had something so beautiful that they got. The vast majority of humanity does not get the gift that these people had. The company of Allah's Messenger, what more would you ask for? They got to hear the kalam of Allah from the Messenger of Allah How much more of a gift can you get? And they exchanged that for their misguidance. They, they traded that away. Then their trade did not give them any benefit at all. 
This ayah often gets translated in a shallow way. Most translations say, and they weren't guided, or they had never been guided. But actually, muhtad is someone who makes an effort to be guided. And Allah is saying, they never made an effort to, to, to commit to guidance. They were never such. This is why they ended up in this case. Even when they entered Islam, it was a casual endeavor. And when you come into something casually, you can walk out of it casually too. When you make a serious commitment to enter into something, it's very hard for you to come out of it. But they, they came into this Islam on a bed of roses, very easy. Islam's on the rise, Medina is becoming more and more powerful. The followers of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, are gaining more and more control. This seems like an easy thing to join. So they joined it, but they joined it with a lot of ease. There was no difficulty for them to join it. They, they